Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, November 8th. Skipped yesterday uh, after work. I got to play D&D with my buddies. Finally, we've uh, missed the last couple of weeks, so that was fun. Um, and then uh, I also took off like three hours early from work today because I just have a lot to do. I, um, of course, had to get out and vote and I'm behind on vlogs, so I wanted to get one or two of those edited, and we need to get some stuff edited for the gaming channel, trying to get the Reliquaries video out this week. Uh, need to do some uh, Bible reading. I think I have the Bible study with John tomorrow. Oh, just so much stuff to do. I had, I had some extra vacation time. I was like, eh, I'll take a few hours. <laughs> Try and think, keep things uh, rolling smoothly. So I got videos, whatever, exporting and such now. But uh, I finished uploading what I have, and I'm, I'm pausing anything that uses the internet. Because it's Tuesday, and typically Tuesday's m you know movie day. Really, the goal was Tuesday, or at least once a week, I tend to put it on Tuesday, is uh, the day to go watch a movie. And it's often movie day, which is just me watching one of the movies on my shelves here. I do that a lot. And occasionally, it's, it's going to the, the movie theater. Actually, the reason that movie day is on Tuesday is I think Tuesday's the day that the local movie theater has like a whatever, a, a deal where it's cheaper to go see movies, and so that's, that's kind of why I started setting it on that day. But that's basically the ways that I've, I've done it so far. Either it's been a movie that I own, and so I watch it here, or it's a movie that's at the theaters. But they've been, they've been promoting a movie that isn't coming out, at least not at this point, hopefully eventually, but not at this point, to, to Blu-ray. But it's not going to the theater. They've been promoting this movie that it, it seems right up my alley. Um, it looks really entertaining. I think I'd very much enjoy. But it streams through the Roku service because Roku apparently is still a thing. I'm talking weird. The Weird Al Yankovic story. That's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so I want to watch it. So, I came in and I played around it, and if I open the Roku website in Chrome, I am able to just play it on the computer and then cast it to my TV, and I can watch it that way. So... You know, it's not the, the, the simplest or most convenient. Like, I have smart TVs, but the Roku channel is not a channel on the smart TVs. It's not an option if you don't have, like, I guess, a Roku stick. Which is annoying. But I can, I can cast it from my computer to my TV and watch it that way. And I want to watch it. It looks entertaining, and so that is what I'm going to do. So that was weird, the Al Yankovic story. <laughs> and having to make a decision on how do I rank this? Not so much what to give it specifically, but I do I do my movie day, movies I have purchased, own, physical media, as um, a 10-point system, but really it's a 100-point system because I use... Um, a, a layer of decimals. Um, whereas I do like my, my, my movie theater watching on like a five, I guess, point system of stars. Um, and so thinking, how do I rank this? And I decided that it is more similar to my experience of watching like a movie that is brand new movie in theater or whatever than it is to a movie that I have owned and whatever. So, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use my star rating. And then if they ever do release it on Blu-ray, I can buy it and I can watch it again. So that'd be fun. So I will give it four out of five stars. And now you know. It was fun. It was fun. The, what I am, you know, 
obviously mostly true story of Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, like the end credit song says, they they did, you know, have him laugh off at the opportunity to to join Queen for Live Aid when really he he did that. But I guess it just didn't fit in the movie. <laughs> It was fun. Uh, when, when real early in the movie, we see Lin-Manuel Miranda as um, the doctor. I'm just like, like, like really, like the opening scene. And like, hmm. I think I'm in for a treat. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of celebrities. There were also... A lot of people playing the roles of celebrities. Because uh, obviously we know from trailers like Dr. Demento and Madonna, you know, who, you know, he was in that, you know, serious but short-term relationship with before she, um, you know, took over the Mexican drug cartels. And, um, you know, as the movie does go over, of course, spoilers, um... You know, through um, the levels that she fell once, um, once Weird Al left her, had him assassinated in 1985. Unexpected ending, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know what to say about the movie. I don't. It does not do what you expect it to at all. Um, it is weird. I have to rephrase that. It is, it messes with my mind because they did the thing where they use the actual, for, you know, Dan Radcliffe plays Weird Al, and he is the speaking voice, but the real Weird Al is still the singing voice, and it's really weird to hear Weird Al's voice coming out of Dan Radcliffe, even if Dan Radcliffe is dressed as Weird Al, it's still just very strange for him to open his mouth and Weird Al's voice to come out. It messes with my mind. <laughs> um, yeah. It was fun seeing... Like I said, there's celebrities and people portraying celebrities. Um, just randomly things like, you know, Salvador Dali and... Um, Okay, my brain went blank. Anyways, at Dr. Demento's party, just the whole host of uh, celebrities that were totally there. Um, to like Madonna and Cindy Laffer and whatever. Um, but then also things like Jack Black as whoever he was playing or things like that. Um, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda, um, Weird Al himself, just sort of the, the little cameo roles throughout that were quite fun. Um, I mean, ultimately, if we have to tell, you know, what is this movie about? It's about a weird kid whose father wants him to work in the factory, because that's a responsible job, but whose dream is to change the lyrics to popular songs and make up new lyrics while playing the accordion. And he moves on to become incredibly successful at his dream. And then as he gets ambitious and decides to write his own music, songs like Eat It, we have other wannabe artists like Michael Jackson come along and parody his music very quickly so that People think it went the other way around, and so he's still known for parodying music even when he writes original songs. And it takes him down a bad path of alcoholism and 
betraying many who are close to him. He goes and kills a the leader of a Mexican drug cartel for having kidnapped his girlfriend because they wanted Weird Al to play a, a little concert at his birthday party. Loses the girl and goes back home but manages to reconnect with his with his family and finally earn his father's approval before being assassinated at a major award show. The story of Weird Al. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. It is. But I enjoyed it. I had fun. I sat around and I had fun. So, that's the movie. I uh, did not enjoy the commercials. Commercials were sucky. Um, whatever. The Just the process of having to cast it from my computer in here into the other room. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is cool that that is something I'm able to do, but not a fan. Otherwise, um, it's probably going to be it. For me, i got a few hours left, but I'm going to just work on um, scheduling some videos, um, that kind of thing. Maybe edit a bit more, try and get some stuff done. So I'll call it a night. Thank you for joining me. Join me as my journey continues.